What is up, you guys? This is JP with JP TV 3000, and I'm Mike from Mike's Mischief. Mike, appreciate that, man. Thank you for your time, man. Mike, tell people about your YouTube channel, man, what they can expect. And uh, I do a lot of truck stuff, automotive. I do like truck shows, truck poles, threshing shows, things that are hard to do in North Dakota. And then sometimes I try to be funny. It doesn't work that well sometimes, but yes, it does, man. Because your, your <laughs> stuff is awesome, man. I've been I've, I've been checking out your content for a while. Uh, man, I've been wanting to meet up with Mike for for such a long time and finally got this chance to meet up with him. I was in the same place. He was in the same place. And hopefully, man, we're going to have more content coming for you guys. So you guys stay tuned for JPTV 3000 and Mike's Mischief. And Mike, man, you keep those you keep those racing videos coming out, man. You, <laughs> you, you keep that content coming out, man, because you're, you're letting people know about a lot of stuff that they never even thought of that even goes on in the area. So technically, you're a, what, 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 what do you call them people? Who, like a uh, billboard? Or a... More than that. You're more than a billboard. You're more than a producer. You're more than a director. You're a, you're a curator of North Dakota's greatness <laughs> that a lot of people don't know. The things, well, I've lived here, <laughs> I've lived here for almost 20 years and the first five were really depressing because I'm from Seattle where there's always something to do at every turn. And you really take that for granted. And I moved here and I just sat in my house and did nothing for five years and wondered why I was always depressed and never had any energy. And so uh, part of moving and living here was to find things to do to occupy your time. I know that you do a lot with the oil field and I have worked in the oil field and I made good money out there when I needed it. And uh, um, you know, if you guys have any interest in the oil field, uh, JPTV3000 is your, your guy. He does all kinds of like the job fair videos and what to expect, what to bring, what to buy, what not to buy. And uh, I don't work in the oil field anymore. I I might tomorrow. You never know when that bill's going to pop up that you can't afford. But uh, yeah, I just try to find the, the other things to do in North Dakota so that when someone like yourself or someone that's not from here uh, knows that there's there are other things to do in, in the summertime i'm talking every single day of every weekend there's something to do and it may not be the indianapolis 500 yeah but it's something it's it may be like in williston they have the thursday nights on maine in williston and i'm pretty sure they have something like that here for sure for sure and let's say the people who do live in indianapolis and could go to the indianapolis 500 probably couldn't have, i couldn't afford it if i lived there i think it's like 500 bucks a ticket or something but but you have so much stuff in the North Dakota area, man. That's another great thing about your channel, bro. You <laughs> you bring the people, you bring to the people some of the hidden gems of North Dakota. I've got to get out and start doing more traveling so that I can get around to doing the uh, museums and stuff like I did with the uh, Epping Museum. So For sure. the um, Buffalo Trails Museum. So hopefully this coming up summer there'll be a lot more projects to work on. I know Mike's got a ton of projects that he's got to work on, <laughs> but one step at a time, build, build it the way that, that you're going to build. Uh, Mike's also got some more content and projects out here that we're not going to talk about right now. We're just going to leave it to where it is. And when Mike's ready to show you guys that, that, that content and those projects, be ready because it's going to be mind blowing and it's going to be awesome. That's going to be awesome. The yeah, bus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you could tell them about the bus, maybe, so no one else steals my idea just in case. No, 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 no. We're not gonna tell them. Okay. Just in case. Mm -hmm. I, I I have control issues. Uh, if you watch my channel, just understand I have control issues. I'm a human, just like anybody else, and uh, yeah, I, I I always have these ideas, but I don't always do them all, and, and sometimes I just can't make it work. And I'm sure JPTV3000, he's been here before, where you make the perfect video, and you're like, nope delete for whatever reason and so i do that sometimes but yeah you can live in north dakota have a good life yeah. live affordably have things to do you know um everybody has seen my boat and i'm built i built that when i had didn't have a job well i was laid off for for covid but you know you're really only limited by your own imagination in north dakota so i didn't know you had like i had seen it but i didn't know like i thought it was just like i seen it when it was just that part <laughs> Like, I didn't know you had, because now you need, all you have to do is just put, put a curtain up on it, or do you have... I got a tarp, I put the tarp up, uh, when I go, if you look up on top, there's eye holes, and I, the tarp just clips in, 
And, uh, see, you got the space, man. <laughs> you got space to be creative, guys. I got to go because I got to yep. get down the road. Uh, My steak is getting cold. I tried making a mistake. <laughs> he wouldn't eat it. No, because I got to get down the road, and I'd already made food yesterday <laughs> that I want to finish eating today, and I've already put off eating it like three days in a row because Qdoba is awesome. But, uh... Well, are you going to come sometime this winter if you're up in this way? we got to do some, some red light drags. That's I know it sounds stupid. You get your favorite fast food typically is Taco Bell or Arby's. And you sit there and you just bet on who's going to win. It is a raging good time. <laughs> and it's like you said, you know, it is a race. I don't care what anybody says. When you get to a red light, it's a race to see who, who gets out in front. Because if you're in that left lane... And you know that person in that right line is a slow driver or one or two cars behind them. You're trying to get around them. And what if it's a guy that's got a V6 and you got a V8? There's, you cannot be... They can't be ahead of you or you're losing. Yeah. How does it look for a Ford F350 or a Dodge <laughs> 3500 Cummins to let a guy in a uh, S10... Like, come on, man. But, and, uh, you know, some of them minivans, <laughs> they, got the, they got the Dodges. They have V8, V6s that are... They put in the Mitsubishi 3000 GT twin turbo. I didn't think about that. I am going to start looking at those more <laughs> now, now that you said that. Because, um, you know, some, some vans I like. The Astro van. I'm a fan of the Astro van. I've had two of them. And I'm thinking about on the third one because a guy's got one for sale over in Wolf Point, Montana. But around 200,000 miles, I know that transmission's on its way out. And I kind of think that's what he's got going on. Um but, uh, they're built on a truck chassis if you get the all-wheel drive ones. I mean... I had both, two-wheel drive and all-wheel drive. Other than accessing that transmission in a van, yeah. it's just a Chevy with like a 400L or like 460, 4L60. Those are, you know, you can get them pretty cheap, but the problem is going to be... You might have to... If I own one of those and need a transmission, I will cut a hole in the floor above the transmission, pull the carpet back, replace it. Do my best to weld that back up and seal it. Put the carpet back over. And, uh, you know, that would make life a lot easier. I mean, it'll keep going, won't it? Yeah, it's going to keep going. Okay. Uh, or you can make it a plate. So, I mean, but you're not going to yeah, have to keep going. Yeah, on. yeah. But, I mean, I'm, if, if that was your only option, you could get a transmission for 200 bucks and you have a van and a Sawzall. Yeah. It's, you know, I, I didn't. That's why my channel's called Mike's Mischief and not Mike Does Things Properly. <laughs> 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 but man, when you, either way, because cause just like you did that, you can add the poles back there and then tarp it off. But of course, tarp, tarpening ain't, ain't going to be, but okay. you, you can get a vehicle. You can get two, almost three vehicles in there. That reefer? Yeah. There'd be no room to move. I I'm I trying could. to think because I hauled. My Astro van and my K5 Blazer home in a in a 53 foot trailer. I'm trying to think. I mean, I could. You can walk around it, but if you put if you put a the bus is not gonna go in there. <laughs> the truck will, but you would have to in get there. that truck up close to one side. And I think you could get in and out the door, but you ain't gonna have a lot of space. But you can get two vehicles in there. I'd like to, like I said, I was thinking. Um, there's no secrets or whatever. I thought about selling my Kenworth and finding a shop kit. We'll see. Uh, maybe renting a shop. I've looked into renting a shop. But, you know, you just got to take baby steps. And I, I'm always afraid of taking a bite that's too big. Yeah. You know, and then you have no room to chew. And so maybe I could afford the shop this month and next month, you know, indefinitely. But I may not be able to afford an air compressor. A, a, having 220 wired into it things like that unless you build it yourself and you just depending on how how comfortable you how, how comfortable you are with concrete having somebody else do the slab and then you doing the the frame the uh all this oil field pipe i was talking to one of the dudes i work with dude you could damn make your oil field pipe for free can't you use that as your as your uh as your pillars Maybe I don't know. I suppose I'd have to get. It, uh, I mean, you know, as long as it ain't radioactive, yeah. Anything like that. I don't. I'd have to look into that. I'd have to see, like, probably because the county. I think the county or the city has to approve. Okay. Uh, of okay, whatever, okay. you know what I mean. And I mean, I could. I thought about getting two shipping containers. Dude, <laughs> yeah. I you, look at look at all. Uh, 
you guys can't see what we can see. He can maybe do a quick sweep for once. I have nine vehicles on my property, and I think I've, I've put my neighbors through quite a bit. They all run. They're all for sale, most of them. What, what it is <laughs> is that it's one thing, like, if you had, you know, like a like a 10 fence or something, and yeah. they couldn't see them. Mm -hmm. They just know, okay, you know, you got stuff going on. Well, they're lined but, up. The only reason this one's here is she got new tires on her car. But, yeah, normally I keep them lined up and try and keep it tidy, but the two you know get two shipping containers and then just get some arched trusses and then all you have to build is the front and back but then you still don't have the concrete Wait a minute. Oh. at home this company that sells them they've got a the kit that goes on top of two shipping containers it's like they get they got two they got two on top of one another going this way mm -hmm. And so you can drive a semi truck mm -hmm. through it, and uh, it's something like that. The only thing you would have to figure out is because if you had two going like this, what you would make the roof out of? You could. I don't know for sure. I know they make kits. You can actually order like a forty foot kit, and it will come with the trusses for a forty foot span that is designed to sit and be built into a shipping container. So, like a roof like that? Uh yeah, it would well, it's a kit that comes <clears throat> I think it comes with the front and back wall. Okay, and so then, you can close comes, it off. Yep, and then it comes with uh trusses so that you can make your shipping container shop. But I don't even know if they would allow that in the county. I don't know if I'd have to do all that. I don't know. I would be happy, and, and I'm thinking of a shop that my mom has at her house. It's just a 40 by 40. with It's built like an old barn with, like, the wings, and then it's tall in the center. So you can get a semi, one semi in there, and then you can have your car projects off to the side. Because my problem is I have literally everything I own is a project of, of some sort that I'm working on or haven't had time or a place to work on. It's too cold out here, and I'm, you know, when you get in... When I got in my late 30s, my elbows and my knuckles started hurting uh, when I work out in the cold. And then it's just not feasible to do repairs at my work all the time because my work needs that, that shop. And yeah. so that's why I've kind of tapered off. And, and like I said, some things with uh, my family, why well, I haven't made as many repair videos. But they do the best. They do repair videos, do very really well in the long term. But either that or... Make it off the edge of your house. Yeah, I've thought about that. Make it off the edge of my house. Um, Just extend the roof out. Extend the roof or, yeah. The, uh, when you do it, get into stuff like that, but, and insurance but, gets funny about welding. And you've got that there. Yeah. What I'd like to do ultimately, you know, I have my shop over here and then just a garage where I park cars yeah. that aren't like my non-project building. Yeah. <laughs> but... I just need to maybe downsize and pick a couple projects that I really want to work on. But, like, I don't ever want to sell my flatbed Ford. That's, like, my favorite vehicle, you know? <laughs> like, I have, a, I have problems. I have, I have problems. If you have an old crappy Ford for sale, do not tell me. I don't want it. <laughs> that might be a lie, but I have enough projects for a lifetime so I can quit buying them and start working on them. And that's going to start with a garage or a shop of some sort and... I don't know. I, I maybe I should be doing working on that the mathematic and logistics of that instead just of YouTube videos. One step at a time, and just find which which pieces fit. As much as I would like to hang out with you guys more, <laughs> as much as I like to hang out with you guys more, we got to get out of here because I got a long two hour drive back. All right, man. Well, when you're back in the area, let me know. We'll go film some red light drags, and then maybe if I come out there, we'll go try and find some decent sounding engine brakes. <laughs> there's only one place and it's a uh, 85 yeah you have 85 there's uh 22 is good 22 you got the break in between uh newtown and mandaree um uh south of mandaree there's a really good eight oh, yeah. percent grade yeah. that one is really good yeah. and you have to have a place where you can pull off safely and say i don't i won't be on a shoulder i don't want to hurt a little pull out um, yeah somewhere on, can... on 85 like that one yeah the one on we're set 22 it's farther up so you can't really you can't but, really but coming from like coming from not dickinson but whatever that would be belfield coming or like grassy butte i think is down below that yeah you're talking or, about going north 
Yep, coming north. Pull off right there. Yep, there's one at the top of the hill there, and then there's. I think one. they're making one on the other end now. Well, I'll do a driveway. There's like a what you call like an approach, and I'll pull off in an approach as long as I can get my my vehicle. I'm in ten feet from the white line because yeah. if a truck's having an emergency or something, and they might need that area to stop yeah. and do something, and so I don't want to encroach on that. But yeah, we I go out in on Highway 85, Highway 22. I've done some on 23, just going onto the bridge, just because it's so pretty, not yeah. for the engine brakes. But I just go out there and film them. And the reason I do that, if anyone cares, is because those were my favorite places to haul, and they are my favorite places to haul. When I was in the oil field, it was like you have the worst day ever. It's hard to be have a bad day, and you're coming down onto that really beautiful bridge. Because you could see down there. So if there's something going on, you know, you know, okay, you know, I need to stop. But otherwise, if there's nobody else around. Yeah. Let that sucker fly down there. Yeah, just let it rip. <laughs> and then, and I do like the loud engine brakes. I really do. And who, only God and the politicians know what's going to happen with electric trucks yeah. in the next 15 or 20 years. And.